Coming up on Signal by Sony, science fiction just got a little more real. We'll take a closer look at what's lurking in the Sony labs. And look who's setting world records. PlayStation is here to walk us through some of their favorite Little Big Planet 2 levels. Signal by Sony starts right now. everyone, I'm Melody. And I'm Anthony. We've got some fascinating stuff lined up for you on this episode. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time on the show talking about Sony's current products, you know, what's out now, what's coming very soon. But this time we're going to focus on emerging technologies and find out who's behind new innovations at Sony. Right, so you know how automakers like to show off their concept cars? Well, electronic brands do the same thing. Uh, it's a really good way to get a peek into what their research teams are developing. And here's a really good example. Check out this video of what Sony calls their Ray Modeler. This is a 360 degree auto stereoscopic 3D display prototype that allows you to see color images from every angle. The left and right eyes are actually seeing different images, giving viewers a sense of depth so that objects like faces and people appear super realistic. And if you were lucky enough to attend some of the conferences where Sony showcased the Ray Modeler last year, you might have actually seen it up close. Man, I would have liked to have been at one of those conferences, but I couldn't go. I wish somebody would bring it from the secret Sony lab here to me. Oh look, hi. This is Joe from Sony's R&D department. <laughs> and he brought the Ray modeler, and this thing is crazy. Joe, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you very much. I am looking at this cartoon dog, and as I go like this, I am seeing it from different mm -hmm. angles. This is insane. I think I just want to run around the table so I could just see all the different angles. It looks so cool. Yeah, I mean, that's this, better. I mean, this is nuts. I mean, and we're seeing this without glasses. How am I seeing this without glasses? Because actually, it's it's projecting, it's already projecting 360 pi different pictures to every angle. Okay. And then you have to wear the glasses. So it's it's doing 360 different pictures, one from, from each degree. Yes. I mean, can you guys do animation with this too? Ah, uh, yeah, in the future. Cool. So how are, how are you making the content for this? Is it going to be easier to make content for this, or is it something special and difficult? If you talk about the CG, it's not that hard, but it's take, if you are talking about taking the real pictures, it's going to be kind of hard, because you need to prepare the several cameras and then uh, one object inside it, and then uh, we're gonna do the software things to prepare the virtual cameras. So it's kind of like motion capture software or like that effect in the matrix. Yes. Very cool. Close to it. Very cool. So I know that you have a couple different versions of the Ray modeler, because this is, this is an R&D product, so you guys are doing tons of prototypes, yes. right? And on one of them, you have hand tracking, right? So these like little dogs, as I uh, did yes. this, would move along with me. How does that work? Yeah, this one doesn't have, but the, our another prototype has uh, the IR sensor here, and then we can move, uh, we can track the hands and then rotate the object inside it. I see. What are the different uses that you're using it for? Uh, we are thinking about the kind of digital signage mm -hmm. and the, the medical yeah. applications and uh, the, some other 360 view, uh, the video games. Dude, I would love to do some video games. Could you imagine a platformer on that? That would be, be so, so crazy. We actually have already have the the pumps. Pong game. No oh, way! Wow. That's well, not so today, cool! Though. Sorry. <laughs> so what are the exact dimensions here of the Ray modeler? And, and can it get bigger? Can it get smaller? Yeah, we need uh, some kind of breakthrough mm -hmm. to make it a lot bigger or a lot smaller, but we are kind of uh, working on the bigger one. About this size. Yeah? Okay, so about the size of like this actual mm -hmm. pedestal that it's on. Wow. Yeah. You can put awesome. the, the uh, one person's head actual like, size. That would be so funny. <laughs> so there's, I'm seeing a lot of like anatomy being displayed on there. What's the most interesting thing that you've seen this being used for? Uh, actually, we have already exhibited this at the uh, Natural History uh, Museum in London hmm. and the British Library also. Oh, wow. And we had uh, lots of uh, feedback from that. You know, it looks really crisp when we're seeing it right now, um, mm -hmm. but I, I believe the frame rates on that device and the, on the camera is different, so there might be a little bit of a flicker. That's but right. when we're looking at it in person, like the textures look so cool. Like that little bear guy, mm -hmm. he was all shiny, and then the little owls that, owls that you had, mm -hmm. they looked really soft. Yeah. It was really cool and crisp how the textures came yeah. to life on this thing. And I can, you know, you can sort of hear like a hum coming out of this now, and mm -hmm. I can tell something is, is spinning. How exactly is this working? Yeah, actually, it's rotating, like 1,800 rotates per minute. Wow. wow. And, really uh, fast. 
So, I, and then why is the glasses here, I guess? Because uh, they, I don't want anyone to be chopped, the, the fingers. <laughs> to be chopped. <laughs> wow, it's going really fast, so if you put your finger in there, you're going to lose it. <laughs> That's funny, because the first thing I want to do, because it's 3D, is I want to touch it. Yeah. yeah. So I get, I would have lost a finger already. Yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, Joe, thank you so much for coming out and for bringing the Ray Modeler here. This is amazing, man. Thank you very much. All right, switching gears now, Little Big Planet 2 is out. You've probably read tons of reviews. Earlier this week, Jeff from PlayStation stopped by the studio to share some of his favorite user-created levels, and we got a chance to ask him some of those tough questions that you want to know about the game. Check this out. All right, I'm here with Jeff from PlayStation. Jeff, thanks for coming by. Always a pleasure. Uh, I heard that you just got back from playing a lot of Little Big Planet. A record amount of Little Big Planet. Actually, I was doing a little bit of playing, but a lot of watching we took three of our best Little Big Planet One designers. We brought them to the PlayStation Lounge in New York, and right at launch, we sat them down, and they played for 50 hours straight. And in the process, set five Guinness Book of World Records. Wow, and in the 50 hours, this is what I think is interesting. They did not repeat a level, right? No, they did, and that was actually one of the records they set. They played over 580 user-generated levels and set a record for most user-generated levels played in, uh, in one sitting. Wow. So, obviously the user-generated levels are such a huge part of Little Big Planet. We've heard a lot about the creation tools and how they've been improved uh, as, as the games come out. I'm not a guy who makes levels. I, you know, I hear you. <laughs> you know, so, so, the good part is, is there's a lot of people who do create the levels. Mm -hmm. And even if it's only the top talented 10%, they're making tons of levels. So the, the first time you load this up, there's actually over three million levels from Little wow. Big Planet One brought into Little Big Planet Two, and and better yet, there's a new uh, graphics engine, so they're they're up res, they look better. So anything that you've seen before, you get to play it again with like a, a shiny coat of paint. And that's cool. And one of the things that I, I kind of got uh, a little fatigued with is like, even as great as Little Big Planet is, you're playing platformer after platformer after platformer, and and it's the character cre the, the level creation tools have really been changed to sort of eliminate that now, right? Absolutely. So you know what we have here is uh, is a level that was created uh, by one of the the designers. He was actually uh, just a just a gamer in Little Big Planet One, and he made some really cool stuff. So you're actually going to show us a couple a couple levels today that have nothing to do with platforming, just to kind of show some of your favorites. Exactly. So this was made by Johnny. And this is Blast Radius, and this is a twin stick shooter. So if you've ever played Super Stardust or anything like that, and it controls just like a twin stick shooter, there's you don't you don't even see Sackboy in this. And uh, this is a game that is most fun when it's played uh, cooperatively. You can play with four other players. Um, the best part is you, you can just jump on, online with other people. And this is not a platformer. And this is just something that he was able to throw together rather quickly. And it's uh, challenging. It's fun. That's awesome. Now, what one of the things that I had problems with, uh, not problems, but it was kind of hard to kind of sift through user-created levels in Little Big Planet the first time. Right. Uh, how has that sort of changed and been made easier? Probably the, the biggest uh, revelation for Little Big Planet 2 in terms of that is lbp.me. It's a website where you can go through and you can find what your friends have built, uh, what the best rated stuff is out there, and then you can actually just click, add it to your queue, and then next time you load up LBP, you can go, you can read what other people have said about these levels, and, and you know, it's important that, you know, to read the, the ratings and leave your own feedback. If you yeah. play something good, let other people know about it. And if you play something that you didn't like, you know, save someone some trouble. Okay, cool. So tell me about this next one. This looks surreal. Yes. Uh, this, <laughs> is called, this is called Duck Blaster, and it's actually surreal how it was created. This was actually created during the world record run. So wow. they were setting, they wanted to set a record for most genres played in one setting in 24 hours. And there's tons of genres out there, like you know, sports games and puzzle games and shooters and everything. And they realized there was no arcade style shooter. So the Media Molecule team, they bounced out to, to another PS3 outside of the room and they built this in 25 minutes. So this Whoa. is Duck Blaster <laughs> and it's a, a pretty competent, you know, if you've played ever like Time Crisis or anything like that, you uh, you don't, you counter to what you would think, you don't blast the rainbow skulls, you actually, you, you blast the cute little ducks. And has anything changed in terms of, of community, in terms of finding friends, adding friends, suggesting levels to one another? Again, lbp.me has all of that stuff covered and you know, sometimes it's a little easier to do something on the computer and also a lot of people, you know, they play the game at home and then they're in work and, and they're, yeah. they're goofing off and it's fun to just go in there and see and it has a, a stream actually and you can see it within the game of activity and you can see what other of your friends have been doing and you can just jump in there too you can choose to follow someone's stream and then uh, if they played something if they hearted something if they rated something you can go ahead and try it yourself wow that's awesome yeah. so what do you got for your for your final level here what it is is it's actually a, a, a sort of a nascent uh, RPG 
So again, not a platformer, and it's not like anything that you were able, ever able to do in Little Big Planet One. It's got again like its own title screen. I love that it's everything really... has its own title screen now. Like it, they all feel so much more complete, you know? Yeah, it's a game within a game. You're not just making levels for a platformer. You're making your own game, and you know it's very early on. But we know that just like the creativity of the community, they're really going to learn to hack the system and do some amazing stuff. So this uh, actually is sort of reminiscent of adventure from like back in the Atari days. And it's a top-down view, and your controller, uh, you control your character who goes in, he's going to have uh, wow. conversations, and then it, it, this is, I think, about the first five to ten minutes that this guy was able to do in just a, you know, a, few, a few days since the game came out wow. uh, to build an RPG. And, uh, and it's completely got its own look, too. You exactly. Know? You've got the rain, and, and music's another big thing. There's uh, a music visualizer. It's sort of like an 808 inside uh, Little Big Planet where you can make and compose your own music, and we're going to see some really creative stuff there. Well, awesome. Jeff, thank you so much for coming by and showing us these levels. I can't wait to dive in. This is actually my personal copy, and I want to take it home and play. Yeah, Get started. give it back. Um, if you haven't already bought the game, you can get it now at StonyStyle.com, including the collector's edition, which I have and I love, and it comes with a sack boy. And you cannot beat that. Oh my god, he's so adorable. I want the little sack boy. I thought you were talking about Jeff. Oh, well, Jeff too. Jeff's married. Hey, Hands Jeff. off. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Anyway, I want to play a little Big Planet 2 very badly. But let's move on. So we've come to a very important part of the show. This is the part where we give away free stuff to Signal viewers. Woo! Woo! So you remember uh, two episodes ago, we did a piece on the history of the Walkman. Well, some of you wrote in to tell us about your very first Walkman experience, and we're going to share some of those heartwarming stories right now. Art emailed us to say, my first Walkman was the SRF F1, an FM workout model from about 1986. It's incredibly small, has a rechargeable battery, and was bundled with a headband and armband accessories. Believe it or not, I still have it in my drawer, and it still sounds as good as day one. What is the headband doing with a Walkman? You can't just like work out. You have to look good while you work out. You have That's to properly true. accessorize to match your Walkman. Yes. Very important. Of course. How you look is, is just as important as how you feel. Uh, here's an email from Casey who says, my first Walkman was actually the Sony D88 Discman, which was designed to play mini CDs. I got it pre-owned at a garage sale and it used to play standard CDs as it has an adjustable slide. I used it at school, in the car, at home, wherever I went. I love this device because it was my first portable music player and it sounded terrific. I still have it today. Now this is the one where if you put a full size CD in it, yeah. it actually, protruded yeah. from it, and it looked so futuristic. It felt like a sci-fi movie every time I saw somebody with one of those. It's like, how does the CD still work? How does it even happen? But just like the Ray Modeler thing, if you put your finger in it, No more fingers. It's really bad, you only have 10. So That's probably <laughs> probably the most impressive story that comes uh, to us is from Brad. He says his first Walkman was the WM1, and it's the second model that they ever made. He says, I'll never forget having that big silver beast clipped to my hip as I mowed the lawn every Saturday morning listening to Sticks, Pieces of Eight, and Queen the game. I still have the Walkman, and it still works. Thank you. You know, the most annoying part of this is that legally, I cannot belt out any sticks or queen tunes right now. That sucks. Well, you could probably speak it legally. As long as the phrases were innocuous enough, yeah. Like if I was to say, don't stop me now because I'm having a good time. I am just having a ball. I am I feel like I am 200 degrees. Hey, isn't that why they call you Mr. Fahrenheit? That is exactly why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit, <laughs> Melody. Thank you. Well, everyone, thanks for sharing your stories with us. As your reward, we are going to give you a bit of an upgrade, a free upgrade with the Metal Gear Solid W Series Walkman. So thanks again, and we hope you enjoy your new Walkman. And just a reminder to the rest of our viewers, uh, keep your feedback coming, whether it's a question about products or a topic you want us to cover. We're always open to your suggestions. Just contact us via Twitter at Signal by Sony or email us at signal at revision3.com. Well, that just about does it for this edition of Signal by Sony. Be sure to visit sony.com slash signal to check out links to all the products we featured on the show or youtube.com slash signal. And don't forget to post your comments too. We do not fear criticism. Bring I mean, I, I, I kind of do, but Melody has a thick skin. Uh, for now, this is Anthony and Melody saying see you next time. Bye. I'm a delicate flower. I know. I know. You have to be nice. You have to be gentle. All right. Show the love. Yes. 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 No. No.